Hello friends and family, my name is Skylant and today I'm going to give you my pick, my top 10 list for the best shared screen co-op games that you can play on PC. Now all of these games are fundamentally pretty decent on any platform that you play them on. Most of these actually are cross-platform as I'm looking through it. I think almost, yeah, I think all of them are cross-platform. But either way, these are the ones on PC that I purposely picked because I, I played them personally on PC and I think that they're pretty good, okay? So there's no split screen in this though. So yeah, Tragically Portal, Dungeon Defenders, those are out because if you're playing on a monitor and you're playing at a desk, it's awkward. Especially if you are a PC gamer, you probably do want to play with a mouse and keyboard and that just doesn't really work. You want couch co-op on PC, but you don't really have the couch all the time. Yeah, anyways, so that's what this list entails. If you're okay with that, if you're cool with that, then let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so immediately let's go ahead and talk about Trine 2. Now you can also play Trine, but I'm just gonna say Trine 2 here because it looks gorgeous. If you got a PC that can run this game, honestly, I run it on my Nvidia Shield as well, so yeah, you should be able to run it, but it still looks really great and it's got physics-based gameplay. But don't worry guys, all of the puzzles are really kind of compartmentalized and everything is kind of just sectioned off right there on your screen, okay? So you got three different characters, but it doesn't get too ridiculous, right? And that's actually really interesting, a three-way co-op game, yeah. Anyways, you got three different kind of characters and you need to utilize these characters or your friends playing these characters uh, to the fullest with the physics-based and very smart puzzles that you're gonna come across. And I just felt like the pacing of this game works phenomenally. Like a lot of co-op games, sometimes it can drag on, the puzzles might take a little bit too long and you know, et cetera, stuff like that. But if you just want a game where you can just sit down with some friends and just run through a game, but don't worry, the puzzles can be really, really challenging. I'm just saying like, if the pace of the game is just really meant for co-op. You know, if you play single player, you can do that, but it obviously is meant for co-op where you have multiple people helping you with the puzzles and helping you physically you know actually mechanically perform the puzzles because it is a physics based platformer thing also it just has a tremendous amount of charm if you don't get that from the gameplay when you actually jump into the game and you hear the dialogue back and forth between these different characters it's awesome Next up, we have Castle Crashers. Absolutely, of course, that was gonna make the list. Castle Crashers actually somewhat recently kind of had sort of like a remix remake. Um, so it's it's a little bit more polished. You know, it's got HD textures and stuff like that on PC. If you wanna go play it now and replay it, there is some new content, but don't expect like, you know, brand new giant DLC maps or anything. I really wish they did that. But God, man, the, the original Castle Crashers is just honestly kind of a masterpiece, kind of a little bit perfect, just sort of. It was a game that I replayed over and over and over again, and I'm somebody that does not replay content, but I felt like the new characters, and also I was really into the uh, MLG scene for the arenas. No, seriously, Castle Crashers has a tremendous amount of replay factors and also replayability with its hard mode, which is incredibly hard. This game, the first run through, is charming. It's so fun. It's so action packed, you know, and, and you can have all sorts of different kind of characters playing with you. You know, it's up to four player co op slash competitive. This actually works as a party game, too, and I even put it in my top 10 party games. But if you go into the hard mode, holy crap, there is still more challenge. So if you haven't played it in a while, I think maybe you should re-pick it up. Absolutely. Next up on the list, we have the Dishwasher Vampire Smile. Now, this technically isn't even out on PC yet, actually. This is a much older game that was back on the Xbox Live Arcade that I played. Pretty much at the same time, I got N+, Castle Crashers, a number of other co-op games, and I was just really into those, you know, Xbox Live co-op games. Well, the dishwasher was one of those. Vampire Smile is so brutal. It is so intense. It's actually probably the most mature game on the list here, but it, it is really, really fast paced and it is incredibly difficult and challenging even on co-op. Me and my friend, we play this nonstop and where we beat other games like N plus in a single day. Um, but no, the dishwasher, it took us a couple of tries. It could, took us quite a few attempts and I had a lot of fun. There's a lot of different combos that you can utilize, a lot of different weapons and overall, like it's just, it's just a 2D, you know, side scrolling beat em up kind of melee shooter thing, whatever. I don't know. It's ridiculous and it's fun. That's all I can say. And it's coming out very soon for PC. Now, the next game on the list is kind of breaking the rule I set up about screen, you know, like it's actual shared screen. Well, no, they keep talking and nobody explodes is, is weird. Okay, so the point of the game is that you don't share the screen. Like, okay, so one person is looking at the actual game and trying to defuse the bomb, while other people, or one other person, is looking at a guide, a menu of sorts, and trying to explain how to defuse the bomb. So that's kind of how that works. Uh, now, you don't need to technically be sitting next to them. I guess you could be on Skype or something, but still, I really wanted to put this game on the list. I don't know if it breaks the rules or not, but you still only have one screen and that's all you need, sort of? I don't know, it's a really weird game that maybe doesn't make sense 
by me just describing it, you should probably just go watch the thousands of people on YouTube that have done Let's Plays and you'll immediately see the intensity of this game. Seriously, just keep talking and nobody explodes. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty fun game. All right, friendos, let's talk about lovers in a dangerous space time. Now, how can I quickly describe this? I'd probably say, I'd probably say, think a twin stick shooter, except two people control one ship and then you have to actually manage the ship. Uh, you've got like a rotating shield thing, you have like multiple different kind of uh, weapons that you can utilize, somebody has to steer the ship, and it seems like it's like a single ship that's supposed to be manned by maybe like several different people, but you just kind of got you and your friend doe. Uh, you can play it single player, but really it's, it's a co-op game, guys. So you have to just like sit here and you're just running back and forth all over the place, kind of reminds me of like Overcooked in ways, and it's, it's hectic, it's chaotic, it's crazy, and it's it's just awesome and now i really like the graphics i really love the lovability of this 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 like game this this whole atmosphere this universe it just it seems cute it seems silly it's just like one of those light-hearted games that you could just jump into that actually gets pretty intense and surprisingly so so even if somebody's not really a gamer i think it could be pretty cool to just throw them in this game and just see how they react and that's kind of part of the fun of co-op isn't it now, next up, I've got Octodad. So, if you didn't know this, Octodad Dadliest Catch is co-op, kind of. See, this is this is another kind of rule breaker. See, the game actually becomes more difficult by playing with co-op, but that's kind of part of the fun, is like how you guys can all work together and against each other, sort of, to actually accomplish the goal of the things. The, <laughs> being a dad as an octopus. Um, okay, so you can have it to where two people control two limbs, or you can have it to where four people control each limb. Um, so, like, you know, one leg, one leg, uh, one arm, one arm, and it, it's just ridiculous. I mean, seriously, if, if you're kind of scared about buying the game, just watch anybody play this game and just listen to how loud they get. Listen to the obscenities. It's a freaking fantastic, dude. So I've played, actually, uh, personally, I played with just one other person. I was the arms. We had somebody the legs. You can also divvy it up like one arm, one leg, I guess. But anyways, that's what I did. It was a tremendous amount of fun. And I guess even if you played it solo, you could still have a lot of fun. But the fact that it just gets so wibbly wobbly and, and chaotic, and that's kind of the point of Octodad. Like, that's literally the point is that it's it's really hard to control the character, so any way that you can get more people to do that and make it even harder, more chaotic to uh, control the character, absolutely dude, it makes the experience better. And it, overall, I think it's actually a truly charming game. But next up, here's a game that is probably one of the most closest games to my heart when it comes to co-op games, and that's gonna be Eve and Ob. Super simple, clean game, okay? And I guess it doesn't really sell itself that well because of that. You know, like Octodad, the blah, blah, blah. Like, like there's other games that are a little bit more uproarious, but Eben Ob is actually really calm, really tame. And it's just the simple premise of it's a platformer and one color can go into certain areas and one color can go into other areas, but um, you know, the world is divided in half based on gravity. So if somebody can uh, jump down into like the underworld and they can kind of like use their gravity to bounce the other person up and you know, some other gravity physics platformy kind of stuff. But um, yeah, one's green, one's pink. The green can touch green stuff. The pink can touch pink stuff. And so that way you must utilize each other and you know, the gravity cause there's, you know, two different gravity settings sort of things, worlds, it's weird. Yeah, and also there's different like a duality with the monsters like you can you hit you hit their shadows and then you pop them And then you have to collect their lights and yeah Anyways, the game is just super vague I guess in a, in a way to try and describe it But it's just really simple really pure and actually it's huge I still haven't beaten it I have dozens of hours in it and there's lots and lots of challenge literally with the challenge modes and just trying to just do the, the normal gameplay the pacing is definitely slow because you are gonna be racking both of your brains to finish this game but overall, I think it's got so much content and it's just so pure and clean, I had to put it on the list. Despite me not really being able to describe it that well, sorry. Now next up on the lists here, we got the uh, Lego. Just Lego, just freaking Lego anything. In fact, I do plan to do a couch co-op version of this list. I know Lego's also on console. There's no way I can't put that on, on this, that list too. It's, it's just, this is amazing. It's, it's all the Lego games. Now, maybe difficulty is not exactly there. However, the challenge for, let's say, an adult would be like finding all the little secrets and everything. You know, that, that's that's the game there. But for a child, it's really fun just to kind of, you know, run through this game and you see the stories as well. I mean, of course, sometimes you do know the stories, like you see the movies, like The Force Unleashed, and you know, you got the Spider-Man ties in, and you know, like Indiana Jones, freaking Harry Potter, all that good stuff. You got all that good stuff. And it's just really fun for like an adult and also for a child to run through this game. But I promise it is fun even for an adult. I mean, my myself, I'm a, I'm a man child, but still, they're really fun games uh, and they're really charming, you know, collecting all the different characters and playing as them, you know, seeing what they can do and how to utilize them. 
I don't know, maybe if you want to speed run it. But really, I think a lot of people who are looking at these lists are looking at games that maybe they could play with a younger audience, you know, older and younger, like a son, daughter, stuff like that. Any LEGO game is going to do you justice. Now, next up, we have Binding of Isaac Rebirth co-op on PC. Here is actually very interesting. Now, there are a number of co-op games that I probably could have put on here that have asymmetrical co-op, if that makes sense, like where one character is a main character and then another character is sort of a side character, kind of like a sidekick. Yeah, that's what's going on here with this game, which actually just adds a whole new layer of chaos to a game that's already incredibly chaotic and in depth. Now, this is a very mature game. It's very grotesque. Uh, I would say so. Yeah, anyway, still, it's it's a charming game in its own way. And uh, the second player is going to spawn as a baby. Now, there's some limitations. The, the game definitely doesn't become much easier. I would say it becomes different, um, but it definitely adds to the experience. It might even be a whole new experience, depending on your skill level with the game. And overall, it's, uh, it's a tremendous way to actually experience the game for the first time, I think. Absolutely. So if you wanted to get somebody into this relatively hardcore-ish kind of game, this might be a good way. But lastly, I want to talk about Overcooked. Now, Overcooked is one of the newer games on the list. It might actually be the newest one, but I had so much fun with it and it left such an impression on me that I cannot leave it off this list. Now, it can also be played as kind of like a party game, um, but basically, here's the concept, okay? You're all little chefs, okay? And you're just trying to make stuff. But the thing is, is that the orders you get can be kind of shuffled around. And then the materials that you need to get can also be literally shuffled around based on the map that you have. And there's like all these different environmental hazards and just kind of keeping up with all the, you know, the different in, like foods and stuffs that you need. It's not like you, you need onions, so you need to go chop the onions, but you need to also cook the meat at the same time. And, and things can actually get burned and you need to like wash the dishes. And there's just so much that you need to multitask with. And then whenever you bring in multiple people and you actually try to share some of the load and actually work cooperatively with that or if you do want to play a party game competitively it gets really i mean i cannot describe how difficult this game got so quickly now you can also do kind of like the bare minimum for some levels like you, there's a star system so one star two star three star if you're both adults and you're both very hardcore gamers you can aim for the three stars um if you're casual maybe you're playing with a younger audience you can just go with the one stars and i really appreciate about that game because other games like even you get stuck and mm, the fun can kind of stop and then there's other games where like Octodad where it's like you just kind of run through it sometimes. So I just really appreciate the duality there. Many couch co-op parties that I've been a part of, it's always been like we either just want casually to play or we want to go hardcore and this game kind of allows us to choose ourselves. So it's always a safe bet to, uh, to pick up this game. Not only that, but it's really charming. It's really funny. And overall, uh, there's actually like a, a skill ceiling there. So you can always come back and kind of get better at the game and always find new ways to kind of not suck. I don't know, man. It's just a good game. You should check it out. But that's it guys, the end of the top 10 list. Now there's lots of games that I didn't mention that are a little bit more small scale and maybe not quite as epic to show off with. And some don't even have trailers, but there's a lot of PC only indie games that are fantastic. You know, I actually mentioned Toth as one of them. I thought it was a pretty cool co-op game. There's some really brilliant games out there and uh, some like screen cheat, but I didn't want to put split screen on here. So anyways, there's lots of co-op games on PC and I'm sure you guys are going to litter the comments with them, but I just want to let you guys know that these top 10s, they're not single player themselves. It's a community event. They're co-op in a way. So join us in the comments below and you can find some new games as well. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you had fun either with the video or with these games. My name's Skylant and I'll see you in the next one.